Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for more anime night in the dojo, and this is going to be Don Machi, or is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? The mouthful. Season 2, episode 6, and after today we'll be halfway done with season 2. And based on my calculations, we might be done with season 3 right around the time season 4 starts its dub, so... I inadvertently had supremely amazing timing for two of the shows that we're doing right now. So we'll, we'll see on this and Komi whether we can just roll straight into that and not have to really worry about anything for a little bit, which would be which would be interesting. Uh, but this week's been kind of slow so far, honestly. It's far away Paladin, still pretty slow. Something at least happened in that show. Komi, we didn't get really any new major characters. and uh, yeah, we, got, we got a fairly slow Komi episode. And a faster Faraway Paladin episode, but faster Faraway Paladin is still <laughs> slower than the Slow Komi episode. Yeah, so <laughs> Wednesday and Friday were both slow, and maybe we've got a faster Monday, since our release order is Wednesday, uh, Friday, Monday. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, coming off last week, uh, Slice of Life episode with them moving into Apollo's old house, which is now their house, and... Uh, Hestia spending pretty much all the money that they made on the war game on the renovations, which uh, were a little overboard, but that's okay. Uh, but, you know, it looks like we're going to have a giant familia and stuff, and then uh, uh, Mikoto found the uh, big-ass debt that she has to uh, Hephaestus for uh, Bell's knife, which the Hestia knife is basically swinging around 200 million uh, of their currency. I forget the name of now, but that it's besides the point. It's 200 million of their currency. And she did say that it could take her several lifetimes to pay off. So she's in the hole. Um, I, I thought at the very least the two uh, ex-members of the Apollo Familia, the two girls would actually join last week. But maybe they're going to be more of a slow burn. Uh, I can't imagine we've seen the last of them. And if you're expecting me to remember names after uh, today, you guys are crazy. So we all know who I'm talking about. Uh, I'm lucky I remember the main cast's name right now with how my week has been going. So I apologize for myself, but uh, that is that. But our uh, cliffhanger, stinger, whatever you want to call it, at the end of last episode was uh, one of the other members of Take's family coming to talk to uh, Mikoto. And I assume it was about the fox girl. So there you have it. That's what we're probably rolling into this week. I can't imagine it's anything else. So it's something to do with Taki Mikazushi's familia and apparently the Ishtar familia. Right. So we, we did get thrown a bunch of gods uh, last week, too. Not a bunch, but a couple new ones were mentioned. So uh, that's some more precedent being set for future god politics, I'm sure. So there's that. Um, you know, Freya's still out there doing Freya things. She might have had something to do with this. You never know. I'm not going to put that past her based on what uh, her character has been uh, shown off uh, the first two seasons here. So, uh, Fox Girl, Rapunzel, whatever you want to call her. She, she's trapped in a tower of some kind in that intro. So, uh, it's going to be Belle's job to go save her, I'm sure. And then he's going to add to the uh, number of women who have a thing for him. It's going to cause problems and hilarious hijinks. So, without further ado, let's push some buttons and see what's up with the uh, second half of this season, shall we? Or, no, it'll be half over after this episode. Yeah, you don't have to look at me like that. I know what how to count to six. Apparently, I don't know how to count to six. That's that's not halfway. That's like, you know, if you pass the person in third place in a race, what position are you in? Uh, you're in, you're in third. You're not in second, like uh, the majority of people keep saying. I, I don't know how uh, people have this problem but uh it's it's something i've seen all over the internet recently so maybe that's my problem i need to learn how to count to six so after this episode we'll be done with six and we'll be halfway so there's that i digress let's start the damn show <laughs> this place hasn't changed much i remember the sights as well as the smell so you've actually been here before just once when the crowd i used to run around with uh Seriously, where on earth do they think they're going? 
She was once a very dear friend of ours. We all used to play together as children. However, she vanished one day and has been missing for quite a long so, time now. So, nobody cares that Belle's been abducted. The abductions this for our collection of shows recently has been impressive. So I wanted to come here and see her with my own eyes before discussing the matter with the rest of you. We can help you gather information and find your friend's whereabouts. Little bit. Do you know where Belle went? Now you realize. Are you saying Master Bell came with you? Uh, <laughs> Master Hermes? Well, surprised to see you in a place like this. Unsurprising to see you in a place like this, though, Hermes. Yeah, here to see a special lady. Uh, no, that's not why I'm here. What are you doing here, Master Hermes? Hey, now, it's rude to pry about personal affairs. You telling me this kid's the record holder for quickest rank up in history? Well, lucky me, I'm the one who found him. Step <sighs> this whole situation has Hermes written all over it. You have no <laughs> idea. I got separated from my friends and my familia, and I was trying to find them. P please let me go. Yeah, that's real sad. But do you want to explain this? You're not leaving until tomorrow morning. Maybe even the day after, if you're lucky. <laughs> We're going to suck the life right out of you. Where you down Death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where we're at right here. I think I smell some fresh meat. Uh, how about we settle this like real Amazons once and for all? Bring it on, you giant freak. Sneaking, sneaking, he is sneaking. If... He didn't face the rock. <laughs> nah, he tried to go backwards. Sorcerer rescues a genie sealed away inside of a lamp. The sorcerer Aladdin. Yes, that's it. Miss Hurahime, do you like stories about it, heroes? It, I do. It, I love them. It, two theater nerds. Holy crap. <laughs> Delivered as promised. And that's that. So, this episode pretty much just lays the groundwork for what the second half of the season is going to be, I'm sure, with uh, Miss Hurahime over here. And Whatever her deal is. Why her family disowned her, I'm sure we'll get into that. Disowned her, sold her off to the Ishtar Familia. I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, Presumably this is Makoto and Jigasa's friend who disappeared one day. Right, there, there is no way. It's pretty obvious that that's who they were looking for. And of course, uh, blessed by fate, Bell uh, just kind of derps into her after... The attempted death by Snoo Snoo, which, yeah, it's been a while for uh, Amazon-related activities, but uh, with Futurama being renewed, maybe it'll be more death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> also, uh, playing the role of Zap Brannigan this week was Hermes. So, yeah, you, you can't lie to a goddess of love, so rip Hermes. Uh, he did it to himself, as usual. I don't know what his game is with this one, but... Uh, you know, he's around doing Hermes things, and, well, at least he got some action, I guess, even if it led to uh, pools of tears. So, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that aside, uh, not a huge amount really happened in this other than uh, threats of death by Snoo Snoo, really. Yeah, this was more <laughs> or less just introducing Ishtar and her familia and setting the groundwork for at some point or another makoto and them is going to freaking bring hestia familia and do like a rescue mission for to try to get haruhime out right which is now and, and apparently ishtar is gunning for freya which is what i was going to get into there so yeah apparently uh they have beef and now, now Bell is the easiest target to get at Freya, so things are going to get complicated, I'm sure. One thing I will say, though, uh, I don't remember the last time Hestia was not in an episode. Has she ever not been in an episode? Thinking about it? No, she's played a role in every episode, really, to some extent or another, even... Even the bit where, like, Belle and them were stuck in the dungeon, she it was still, like, showing a whole bunch of her. 
right back on the surface so that that was the only thing i kind of found a little weird in this um considering everybody else figured out what was going on and they just kind of left, left hesty out of the uh, whole situation so i guess we'll get her hilarious reaction to them spending the night in the red light district uh, next episode so <laughs> look forward to hestia dying from shock apparently and then having words yeah. <laughs> bells probably in for drama the moment he gets back because presumably lily and them all made it back to home base and i'm just right. gonna wait for him this whole time right i i don't know how they're gonna come uh come explain that one to her it's like we kind of lost bell last night where'd you lose him somewhere well we're somewhere <laughs> Uh, there's going to be, like, a major search out for him, isn't there? <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure there's going to be crazy nonsense hijinks with that next week, so that's going to be fun to look forward to. But, yeah, again, this was a slow week across the board from Wednesday to, to Monday here. I mean, th this this episode, this show probably had the most going on, uh, just story-wise and just furthering the story and whatnot. Um, you know. Another god, Ishtar. We we knew somebody was coming. We knew she was coming this week, and I guess she. The one thing that we didn't really, I guess, peg was the fact that she has a uh, a problem with Freya. But I get the feeling in this world, a lot of people probably we, have a problem with Freya. So yeah, and we suspected that Freya was going to be involved to some extent in this storyline. Anyway, we just usually expect her to be the perpetrator, not the target. Right. So. I sort of called it, but not really. Fair enough. Um, so this arc is going to have interesting implications across the board of how it's going to be handled. Obviously, Belle was not pleased leaving her behind. I mean, we got that reaction out of him. Yeah. You know, he was not pleased. Uh, not pleased, but there wasn't really any, much of anything he could do about it in that situation. He's going to have to come back with a plan and a team. Right. And one would assume that, based on her situation, that even if he tried to go full, like, oh, I'm just going to get you out of here, that collar she has on is very cinder. You know what I mean? Very magical-oriented, and it would uh, do something bad if she left the district. <laughs> yeah, the collar is very suspicious, and we know Aisha was tailing them. It was revealed. Like, even if he tried to do something there, she would have just stepped in. Right. So yeah, we got introduced to uh, the Ishtar Familia. That was interesting. Amazons. All right, even though she's a Mesopotamian god, goddess, but whatever, it's fine. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. Not all of her familia is Amazons. It's just the Amazons in general are just a subset of people within the city itself. Right. But uh, interesting, uh, interesting mix there, so... I'm not saying it's not capable of happening, it's just weird to me. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I assume next week they'll it will start with hijinks and then the very serious problem of however they it's gonna come out somehow that oh yeah, I ran into this uh girl that you know said she was from the far east, and then Mikoto will be like, wait, you ran into her, and then that's gonna have the rest of the story explain what the heck happened there. So I'm sure there'll be more insight into what the deal was with her family because I'm sure uh, the rest yeah, of Makoto's... Kage's family knows what's going on with them. So M Makoto and Jigasa already are sold on the whole train now that they found her wanting to break her out. And now that Bell's like had a chance to actually like interact with her, he's going to be all for it. So obviously once they get together and all the initial wait, what happened drama settles down, they're all just going to unite to try to figure out a way to come get her out of here yep so this should be a fairly interesting arc and i'm sure it, i'm fairly certain it should probably take up the entirety of the second half of the season here probably especially with how big of a deal ishtar familia apparently is supposed to be yeah i get the feeling there's going to be some serious shenanigans in politics with her so they're probably going to be deal dealing with two separate problems here at the same time uh so there's that, but again, not now a lot. 
now that they've set the president for it, it'll probably end up turning out to be like they initially try to break her out by themselves, but then it turns into having to be a war game. Yeah, that that could be the theme of this season, and especially when we talked about this with the uh, Faraway Paladin. But uh, they do show uh, Bell fighting members of the Ishtar Familia in the intro, so take the intro with a grain of salt as always. But you never know; uh, it could turn into another war game of of some kind, especially now that Estia has more to lose. But we all know that Bell is going to be the prize again, because that's just how things seem to be going these days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, it should be inter an interesting arc. She it seems like a reasonable character. They can uh, theater and story nerd out together and uh, make Hestia and Lily jealous over there and add more to the love triangle nonsense. So there you go. Yeah, it's different circumstances for the same thing. Yeah, if it does turn into a war game of, once again, Bell is the bargaining chip for freaking apollo it was just oh hey this guy's clearly a big deal a potentially big deal adventurer i want him in my in my corner to where now it's ishtar of like oh but this would totally piss frey off right so the the background politics and clandestine nonsense is real so it's it's gonna be a thing i'm in but as for this week pretty sure that's all we got so age Uh, yeah, uh, there really isn't a whole lot to discuss on this one beyond that. Indeed. Uh, it's kind of funny, uh, I guess on a random, like, little thing to throw out there, it's kind of funny for again, Makoto and Chigasa trying to act like they're a couple sneaking through the red light district. And then they got accosted by no less than six, uh, uh, male hosts, so... <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a pretty uh, solid sequence there, and kind of weird that Lily just kind of let Bell get abducted and was more focused on the objective of tailing the other two than what's going on with Bell, considering she's all about him. So that was interesting. Lily, Lily is less like Hestia is very obsessive over Bell. Lily isn't really obsessive over him; more so, she just gets jealous when she directly sees him interacting uh potentially flirty with another girl it could be argued that this episode had the most egregious uh examples of that happening though <laughs> and she was just blissfully unaware just locked on target of what's going on over here but i guess you could argue that based on everything that happened with the soma familia that she is just naturally suspicious of suspect behavior so yeah, yeah what, really when it comes down to it, like I was saying, it's just like Hestia's always focusing on Belle, whereas Lily, if she sees it happening, she gets upset. But that doesn't mean she's always trying to look for it happening. Right. She she already broke the fourth wall talking about it last episode. She she, she met her quota. She's good. They, they have that trope covered, right? So, yeah, again, I think it was a reasonable uh, start of this uh, arc here, so... Looking forward to how they kick it off next week, but we know the hijinks are starting. If it's, if it's not Hestia yelling at the beginning of the next episode, I will be surprised. So, looking forward to that. But, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more Anime Night in the dojo. This was Don Machi, or is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Uh, whatever that mouthful is over here uh, in English. Uh, season 2, Episode 6. We're halfway there, and second half of the season should have a pretty damn interesting uh, story arc to tell, so looking forward to that. We're done here for the day, so have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you as you watch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>